you of all people actually understand what it's like to live in a society where you don't technically have the freedom of speech. Mm. Uh, but for people who might not appreciate that, what's it like? So what can you not say in Russia? Uh, since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which they call a special military operation, if you call it a war, uh, you can be prosecuted and put into prison for 10 to 15 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and one of the insane things that was happening, particularly early on, because there was a big eruption of protest early on, of course, and, and concern yes. about the war, um, people went out in, uh, to protest with, with placards, with signs. Uh, you know, they would say peace or for peace or I want peace or whatever. And these people would be arrested and taken away. So then people started to go out on their own because if you protest with other people, this is like a, a protest and that's illegal. So if you go on your own, it's called a single man picket. You're allowed to do that. So they would go out, they would get arrested, right? If they had a sign. So then some people started going out on their own and having no sign, they just pretend to have a sign and <laughs> right. they would get arrested as well. Is this something that you've actually witnessed or is it showing in some media outlets or something? Yeah, so I can't go to Russia right now because I'd, I'd get arrested straight away. But uh, I have friends and family in Russia uh, who live there who, who are sending me all this, uh, all, all this footage and, and the, these are genuinely things that were happening. Uh, growing up in the Soviet Union, it was really weird because there were several types of truth that, that we had. There was the public truth what you would say in public if, if you were to be asked your opinion about something. Then there was what you might say with your friends and mm. then there was what you would say around the kitchen table. Right. And, and, the, and people who lived in the Soviet Union, I imagine it's the same in North Korea. They got used to knowing what they're, they're supposed to think in different contexts. So you literally had different realities depending on where you were. And so right now, for example, the truth is nobody really knows what public opinion is of the war in Russia because if exactly, you if exactly, you if yeah, you have yeah. official polling that says 80% of people in Russia support Vladimir Putin it could be true it could well be true that that's the case but I also know that around the kitchen table people have their own conversations that never become public and so if someone walks up to you in the street like what do you think about the war they mm. know it's on camera. They're not mm, going to give exactly. you an honest answer. And so, uh, you know, the example I always give uh, Ceausescu, the Romanian dictator, towards the end of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the Cold War, he had a 95% approval rating the day before he was arrested and summarily executed. So in that kind of society, you don't really know the exact nature of public opinion, what people feel, what they think, why they're going along with certain things, because everybody has their own private reality and the public reality because they know what they're supposed to say. And it's a weird experience to grow up and I don't imagine in a free country like South Korea you really have that. Sometimes we get, I suppose, one of these quote, constructive criticisms uh, mm. when we, let's say, do street interviews on, on the streets of a uh, Beijing or Shanghai in China. You know, you sometimes see people saying like, oh, you know, what's the point of asking these people anything? They know they're in front of the camera. The answer is going to be all fake anyway. But I suppose our attitude has been like, no, we're not exactly trying to ascertain the public sentiment for political purposes it's at least to, better to hear what they think and why they think the way they do. Mm. Would you rather not hear them out at all and then rely on what CNN says of what people think in China? So that's sort of been our stance. So, you know, we just want to at least kind of humanize and just, oh, this is what everyday people sound like. And that's totally legit, man. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, uh, I, uh, I'm just saying that in, a, in an authoritarian society, you've got to be uh, you're probably not going to get the entire truth on exactly. controversial subject. This is how it was in the Soviet Union, by the way. This is why I'm, uh, I get quite angry with people like Bernie Sanders and people like that who went over to the Soviet Union. He went to, to the Soviet Union on a, on a honeymoon, believe it or not. I talk about this in my book. And he would have been shown a completely fake reality. If you go to visit North Korea, you're not, as a Westerner, or as anyone really, you're not going to get to see the reality. They will right. take you to a place that they will pr pretend is the real deal, but is not. Um, so, yeah, you just got to be wary of the fact that people, most people will not be honest because, as we talked about just now, 
uh, if you are honest about certain things, you may go to prison for it. Uh, and people have been arrested for criticizing the quote-unquote special military operation, which is uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. Having lived in those quote-unquote uh, authoritarian regimes, mm. you know, what would be sort of your ideal image of the West? It's like, oh, our environment is like we have this multiple levels of truth, but man, only if we were in America or in other free countries, mm -hmm. then we could say whatever we want to say. I mean, what was sort of like your perception of the West? Well, you hit it on the head. I mean, uh, at the time when I was growing up in Russia, uh, we were all taught that uh, the West is evil. And, ca you know, these capitalist bourgeois, you know, evil people. Uh, even, uh, you know, my family were not big fans of the Soviet regime, but even they bought into the propaganda that the West is evil and whatever. And it was only really when they could, Interesting. They could yeah, go. Yeah. So I give you an example. My, my mother... She grew up on the very border with Finland. Uh, it, this is northwest Russia. And uh, her family, like I say, they were not huge fans of the regime, but she remembers as a girl, like going to the border with Finland and like going, you know, screw you Finns, because that's what the kids were all taught. Uh, but to me, what I learned when I was growing up in the West was that the difference is uh, that this is a society where you're supposed to be able to have your own opinion and people don't bother you. Like we have a, a joke in, in Russia, you know, why can't you have sex in Red Square? It's because you'd get too much advice from the passers-by because everyone is up in your business. Everyone is telling you, you know, you're supposed to do this. Like, and, and it's not just Russia. Ukraine is the same in many other parts of the former Soviet Union. It's just part of the culture. There's a more kind of community vibe. Like I remember my wife and I were walking in like early spring somewhere in Ukraine. I don't remember the city. I think it was actually in Lviv in Western Ukraine. And she had flip flops on and this, and she went into a shop and I was standing outside because I didn't want to go into yet another shop with her. So I was standing outside and this woman came up to me and she said, excuse me, can you, is your, is your wife, is she okay with the flip flops? Cause she, tell her she might get cold. You know, like everybody's up in your business all the time. It's this kind of, and look, it has many positive aspects because people are looking out for each other, you could argue. But in England in particular, like no one is, you could, you could be doing, you could be walking along almost naked in freezing winter and nobody would even, everyone pretend that it's not happening. You know, that's kind of how it is. Uh, America is a bit different. What I learned when I went to America first couple of times is people are very respectful of your distance, but if they feel like uh, you need some help, you're standing in a queue and you're discussing, you know, that thing that's on the menu, is that this or that? Like people will chip in and they will give you uh, advice. So it's kind of halfway between the two cultures. Uh, but generally speaking, the thing I always really appreciated about the West was the idea that you are free to live your life the way you want. As long as you are uh, respectful of the law and you are not interfering in other people's lives, live your life how you want, right? Do whatever you want with your life as long as you're not hurting other people. And to me, that is a very important principle, actually, because coming from a society where you were told what to think, you were told how to behave, you were told what you're supposed to think and not supposed to think, etc. The fact of it is about 80% of people in Russia get their news from t television. Right. The state media. Yeah. Uh, well, there is no other media in Russia right, anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, the first thing that Vladimir Putin did when he came to power is consolidate the media. He got rid of any independent people who owned independent TV channels. So there is no other media in Russia other than state media. Even, even to date? Like what about yeah. Facebook, uh, YouTube? Uh, Facebook, Facebook is shut down in Russia. You need a VPN if you want to use Facebook in Russia. So in Russia right now, I think there is a very strong indoctrination element going on in terms of what you see on television. I watch some of these programs kind of for research. And if you take them literally, it's insane. Like you literally have people on TV screaming, we need to drop nukes on Poland. We need to drop nukes on New York. We need to drop nukes on Washington. Uh, and uh, that is the informational space that people are operating in uh, because that's, that's what they're being told. So there's a very aggressive... Uh, thing going on in schools. Uh, children are now uh, being uh, given classes about how to fire weapons and how to apply bandages and all this sort of thing. So it's, it's become a very war-obsessed 
society in that way. But as I say, no one really knows, not even people, not e I can call up someone in Russia now and say, you know, what's going on? What do people think? And they wouldn't know because you don't really know what's going on in people's private homes and their private opinions. So it's very hard to judge.